So you've decided to change the idler pulley on your dryer. That's a fairly easy job. We need a few tools, a Phillips screwdriver, a 5 16 nut driver, probably should have a pair of channel locks, and a small flat blade screwdriver. Let me show you how we do it. The very first step, as usual, is to disconnect the power supply to your appliance. If your dryer has a cord on it, simply remove it from the receptacle. If it is a hardwired dryer, find the disconnect switch or the fuse panel and disconnect the power to it before we start. The next step in this repair is open the dryer door. We have a screw in each of the two hinges, two screws on the opposite side. Phillips head screw, we just need to remove those. Now this hinge is designed so that it will stay in place even though you take the screws out. So you don't have to worry about the door falling off and landing on your foot. The screws are different, so I make sure that we take the countersunk head screw or for the hinges. We just lift up on the door. that hinge out. A couple of spear points on it there that hold it in place. I'll set that aside. The remaining two screws from the opposite side off. And the plastic retainers. The screw has a flatter head on it. Grasp the top of the front panel and turn outward on both sides. Let it tilt down. Then we can lift it off with the clips on the bottom. There's two slots that fit the two clips on the bottom. Set the front panel aside. Now our next step will be to remove four screws from around the front bulkhead. And we'll take note that there is a cutout with a screw in it and one right beside it on each side. Two in the bottom on the left, two in the top on the right. We don't need to take both of those screws out. Just take the one out that's in the cutout. Now we'll lift up on the top just a bit for clearance and we'll pull the whole bulkhead at the frame. Now there will be some wires attached to the dryer, to the door switch and a light bulb if your model has a light bulb in it. So we'll need to disconnect those wires. And take note of the location where each wire will be. Set the whole bulkhead aside. The next step will be to lift up on the drum, pull it slightly forward to lift it off the rear drum rollers. That will allow us to release the tension on the idler pulley and bracket so that we can get the belt off of the drum. When we'll reach inside, right behind the motor, you're going to find the belt and the idler pulley with a spring attached to it. 
We can just merely roll the belt off of the idler pulley. Now again, we'll lift up on our top, pull the drum out, through the opening, reach in and drop the belt off of it. Remove the belt. Now with the drum out of the way, you can easily see the idler pulley here. It's held in place on the shaft with an E-ring. So we take a flat blade screwdriver, just get into that E-ring and pop it off. It'll be a fiber washer and our idler pulley. To replace the idler pulley, we'll just take our new pulley, slide it over the shaft. Your fiber washer, slide it over the shaft, up tight against the pulley. Take our E-ring, Line it up with a groove cut in that shaft. Take a pair of channel lock pliers and squeeze that down into place. Now we're ready to reinstall the drum and the belt. Put our front bulkhead back on and our front panel. And we're done. The next step in reassembly is to put our drum back in place. When we do, we'll have the belt riding about two inches in front of this little rib. And it'll be the rib side of the belt against the drum. Lift up on our top. Push the drum back to four or five inches from the back. Now we can reach in over the top of the drum on both sides, lift the belt off our rear bulkhead and lay it on top of the drum. Remember to keep the rib side on the drum. And don't worry too much about the position of that belt in relation to the groove just yet. Our next step will be to take the belt from the left side, pull it across the top of the idler pulley, roll it over the idler pulley, and pull it back and roll it over top of the motor pulley. And we're going to counter the force of the spring at this point. So if you wish, you can reach in with your left hand, grab hold of the idler, and pull it towards the left side of the cabinet. That'll take some of the tension off of the pulley. Make sure it's centered on the motor pulley. It's still on top of the idler pulley. At this point, we can lift the drum up onto the two rear drum rollers. Now before we turn the drum, let's position that belt on the drum. Pull it ahead to about two inches past this groove. Making sure there's no twists in it. And we still have the groove side or the rib side of the belt against the drum. Now you can feel in where the motor pulley is, verify that it's still on that, that it's rolled around the idler pulley properly. At this point we should be able to turn the drum freely. You'll see our blower wheel will turn, meaning that the motor is being driven as well. Give it a couple of rotations to make sure that it positions itself properly on the drum. If there was any twists in it, it would have rolled off by now. Now we're ready to put the front bulkhead on. Reconnect the wires on this model to our drum light. And also to our door switch. Outlet or inlet 
with the blower housing. Set that in. Rotate the bulkhead into the opening. We'll need to lift up on the drum a little bit here. Position front glides of the bulkhead underneath the drum. Now that we have it roughly in place, we can rotate it. We get it centered. Line up the screw holes for the four screws to hold that bulkhead on. Reinstall those. Position our wire harness back where it should be. Before we go any farther, we want to make sure that the felt on the front bulkhead is not folded over, pinching against the drum, both front and rear. If it's folded out, take a fairly blunt, straight instrument, a small flat blade screwdriver, just put it in that opening and rotate it around the perimeter fold that felt back where it belongs. Now that we've got the front bulkhead in place, we need to reinstall the hooks that hold the top down. Put the top panel firmly in place, locate that little slot, put your hook in, rotate it around, and it should line up with the screw hole there. Repeat for the opposite side. Now we can reinstall the front panel. We'll line up the slots in the bottom of the front panel. Two hooks attached to the base frame. Rotate the panel up into place. We need to engage two little openings in the top of this front panel with these angled hooks on both sides. So we'll tilt the outside in first and rotate it around. Now at this point, we can reinstall the front panel clips. ready to put the door back on. You can just barely see the two slots for the door hinge. So we'll line those up. Even if we get one in first, make sure it's firmly pushed in and then it should drop down to the center hole in the hinge lines up hole through the front panel. Take our remaining two Phillips screws, fasten the hinges. And our repair is complete. And that is how easy it is to change an idler pulley on your dryer. Thanks for watching and good luck with your repair.